Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. For more than two years I commuted to London every day for work and would often spend lunch breaks and half days off taking a look at historic places of interest. Whether the Tower of London, the sites of the Jack the Ripper murders, Cleopatra's Needle, the Petrie Museum and so on. But one thing I didn't know even existed until recently is something known as the London Stone. It's an historic landmark that's housed on Cannon Street, across the river from Shakespeare's Globe Theatre. The specific building on Cannon Street, number 111, isn't some grand museum or ancient historic structure, it is actually a relatively new build bank or investment centre, a standard office building in London. But, as we can see, there is this strange small structure at ground level. Directly above it, it says London Stone, with these two plaques either side to tell passers-by what they're looking at. And what are we looking at? Well, through the window is a modest chunk of oolitic limestone, measuring 53 centimeters by 43 by 30, or 21 inches by 17 by 12. Apparently the remnants of a once much larger object that stood for many centuries on the south side of the street. Okay, it sounds semi-interesting, an old rock in the middle of London, but why am I choosing to make a video on this? Well, I do have an inquisitive mind, and this rock has been documented and did have prominence for nearly a thousand years, being first recorded around the year 1100 AD. Here we can see it on the copper plate map of 1553 to 1559. The stone is specifically labelled, looks tall and conical on the diagram, and interestingly, it stands opposite a church that's no longer there. And of course, where you find churches in ancient Britain, you often find much earlier places of worship or important sites of interest. This map, its specific location close to a church in the 16th century, and the fact the stone remains a landmark today, really did get my attention. And I really wanted to find out more. Before being widened to make Cannon Street, the road it used to stand on was Candlewick Street and the church on the 16th century map is St Swithin's Church. The stone is also marked on the so-called woodcut map of the 1560s, and in 1598, London historian John Stowe described it as a great stone called London Stone, pitched upright, fixed in the ground very deep, fastened with bars of iron. Twenty years before, and a French visitor wrote that the stone was three feet high above the ground, two feet wide and one foot thick. The earliest record of it dates to 1098 to 1108, where there is reference to a property that was given to the cathedral by a man named Eadwaker of Lundinstein, meaning London Stone. Throughout the 1100s and 1200s, there were other people who adopted the by name at London Stone. The father of the first mayor of London was known as Aylwin of London Stone. The stone continued to be a landmark in medieval London. In 1450, Jack Cade, who was the leader of a rebellion against the government of Henry VI, entered the city with his men and struck his sword on the London Stone, and claimed to be the lord of this city. The background behind such an action is unknown. By the 16th and 17th centuries, the stone wasn't a mere landmark, but it was more like a tourist attraction, and legends were told that the stone marked the centre of the city, that it was there before the city even existed, that it was placed by King Lud, the legendary rebuilder of London. The myths go on and on. The buildings on Candlewick Street, including the church, were severely damaged in the Great Fire of London in 1666. There is a reference to the stone around this time, saying the remaining part of London Stone, implying it was around the time of the Great Fire when the stone was reduced in size. By 1720, the remnants were protected by a small cupola that was placed over it. In 1743, it became a traffic hazard so was moved to the north side of the street, against the door of the new Wren Church of St Swithin. 
it moved again in 1798 and in the 1820s and was eventually built into the middle of the church's southern wall. The church was gutted by the bombings of World War II. The walls of the church still stood and the stone remained in position untouched. But in 1962, a new building was erected. The stone remained in a specially made alcove in the wall with its very own protective iron grill. In 2016, a new office building was constructed. Initially, the landowners didn't want the stone there, but after objections from the Victorian Society in English Heritage, the landmark had to remain. Today there is a plinth for the stone, its name is etched into the wall, it sits behind glass and there are plaques on either side. So, that's a very convoluted history, but what's the deal with the London Stone? What is it? Why is it so important? As with many strange relics in ancient Britain, there are countless legends, myths and stories, and all of them try to explain its origins. Some say the Druids used it for sacrifice. It's a Roman milestone. Dozens of ley lines pass through it. It was placed by Brutus of Troy, the legendary founder of London. It's a pagan altar. King Arthur pulled his sword out of the stone. It's the famous Philosopher's Stone. I shouldn't have said that. I should not have said that. And the list goes on and on and on. But there is no specific history attached to these myths. What we know is that this specific type of rock actually originates in Rutland, England, and it's known as Clipsum Limestone. And the Romans transported this specific type of rock from Rutland to London for building projects. Interestingly, in the 1960s, archaeologist Peter Marsden was able to place the original position of the stone into the layout of the known remains in this area from Roman London and it was aligned with the centre of a large Roman building in and around the area of Cannon Street. The building is said to be the provincial governor's palace and it was certainly an important administrative building. It had a garden, pools and several large halls, some being decorated with mosaic floors. It wasn't too far from the famous Roman Forum. The stone could be part of its entrance or gateway, or maybe an important monument or local landmark that was erected in the palace forecourt. Either way, it's interesting that the stone was in a prominent and important position in Roman London, and it likely had some specific function or symbolism. Today, the London Underground passes directly under Cannon Street cutting through any Roman archaeology, a section that was dug in 1884. And, when the work was done, no thought was given to the past, and so, any specific context of the stone is now lost forever, apart from the nearby work that was done in the 1960s. Interestingly, although around 18 metres from its original position, the London Stone originally stood at the centre of the grid of new streets that were laid out by King Alfred when he established London in 886 AD, after the Viking raids destroyed the Saxon town. Therefore, it must have been important to the Saxons of London, and maybe it did mark the original centre of the city. It's around this time it would have gotten its new name, aka Lundin Stain in Old English. The London Stone will always be shrouded in mystery, myth and legend, because its history is so fragmented and its origins unknown. It has no doubt been an object of veneration and an important landmark since Roman times. It survived the Viking raids, the Norman conquest, countless rebellions, the Civil War, the Great Fire of London and World War II. It has always been protected and cared for by the City of London, and hopefully it always will be. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.